Number 28. What current flows through a 2.54 centimeter diameter rod of pure silicone that is 20 centimeters long when 1 times 10 to the 3 volts is applied to it? All right. So let's just write down what we know and what we don't know. What current flows? So that's the question. So I is what's being asked for. Okay. They tell me the diameter now of the rod of silicone. Now we've seen in the prior problems, check out I think 24 through 27, We've seen now that if they're giving us the diameter, we can surely find the cross-sectional area, which is what is really important here. We need to know the cross-sectional area of the wire in order to kind of relate that to resistance. So the cross-sectional area now of the wire will be, remember, it's circular. So check out those other problems. I've gone through this example, you know, many times. This one we got to move it a little faster through. So it's equal to pi r squared. Now, what's the radius? Well, if they told you the diameter... You simply got to take that and divide it by 2. So 2.54 divided by 2. That would be the radius. But it's in centimeters. It's in centimeters. We need it in meters, so you got to multiply that by 10 to the minus 2. Okay, you can obviously do you can obviously do your dimensional analysis out if you need. Um, but, you know, hopefully at this stage the conversion is a little faster because the problem is going to get probably a little longer. So 2.54 divided by then 2 multiplied by... Uh, 10 raised to the minus 2. And then what we have to do is we have to square that and then multiply that then by pi. And we realize now the area here will be equal to, I'll just write it along the side of this. So 5 point, I guess 0, 0.07, but I'm going to use the exact value when I actually calculate times 10 to the minus 4, and that will be in terms of square meters. All right. So that's the area. What else do they tell us? They tell us the length. Right, the length is going to be, they tell us, 20 centimeters long, but you know we need that in meters. So convert that into meters, divide it by 100, or multiply it by 10 to the minus 2. That'll come out to be 0 0.2, zero, zero meters. What else do they tell us? They tell us a voltage. Okay, they say it's going to be 1,000 volts. Great, so write down the 1,000. 1,000 volts. They also tell us it's silicone, right? Silicon. So what does that mean? Well, that tells us now, or we can find this, we got to look it up in the table. We know the resistivity then of that particular piece of silicon. Okay. What is it? It's 2300. 2300, if you look that up in the table, ohm meter. Okay. At 20 degrees Celsius, by the way, does it tell us the temperature? No. So what do we have to do? Assume, right? We got to assume. So this is what we know. Now, we have to take a step back, okay? There's a whole bunch of letters down here, but what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna highlight them. See, when I look at this, I don't necessarily see in this because I do a ton of practice, by the way. There's nothing, no, no, uh, no strange talent here, just a ton of practice. When I see this, I'm not looking at this as just one jumbled mess of variables. I'm, collect I'm organizing them in my mind. In other words, I'm looking at this and this independently kind of, but yet at the same time, so I know it's a little strange, but as these three, okay? So what I realize then is I'm saying, you know, these, these ones in green are related to one another. Why or how? How do I know that? Well, because I know the formulas, right? And I also know the concepts, right? Check out number 24. Um, but I know that in the ones that I highlight in green, are related to each other via this formula. The resistance is equal to the resistivity multiplied by the length all over the area. I know those are related via that formula. Okay? Look, here are the three. Area, length, and resistivity. Area, length, and resistivity. So, I also know now, when I group these two together in my mind, I'm like, wait, voltage and current, aren't they related via that, oh, Ohm's law thingamajig? Right? That Ohm's law equation? That current is equal to the voltage over the resistance. Right, 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 right. But wait a minute, if I gotta find the current, then I gotta know the resistance. Right? Because I, I know the voltage already, they told that to me. So wait a minute, I gotta find the resistance. Well, the other formula gives me Oh my goodness! No way. If I find the resistance with this formula, I just plug it in. Right? That's it. But that comes from practice. Okay, you gotta do a lot of practice. So basically what I'm gonna do here is instead of finding the resistance separately then and plugging it in, what I'm going to do 
is I'm going, and you can, you can do that by the way, I'm just going to take this and plug it on in, the formula, okay? So we're going to have current is going to be equal to the voltage divided by then the resistivity of the silicone multiplied by the length divided by the cross-sectional area. And that's it. All we have to now do is plug this in. So there's going to be 1,000 all over the resistivity, which we said is 2,300. 2,300. The length then was going to be 0.2 meters, all divided then by the area, which we said was about 5.07 times 10 to the minus fourth. And all we have to do then is just calculate. Okay. And I know this is probably a little confusing, but just look at this as like two separate calculate. Uh, obviously, there's nothing to calculate there. It's just 1,000. Calculate this. All right. And then we go and we'll divide that into 1,000 essentially. All right. If it, you don't have to obviously plug this into your calculator all at the same time, you can do it in steps. So 2,300, I'll do that times 0.2 divided by then that exact value from before that uh, area. So let's say divided by that. So I get an answer of about, you know, 907,000. I'm going to take 1,000 then and divide it by that value. And we work out with a current, work out to a current here of about 0 0.00110. You know, so if you need that in scientific, I don't know, 1.10 times, you know, 10 to the minus 3, that's in amps. Okay. Um, that's fine. If you need it in milliamps, just get rid of the times 10 to the minus 3. Who knows what units you need? They're all the same. Right? Would you rather have, uh, you know, $100 or 250s? To me, it doesn't matter. They're both the same. One might be more convenient in certain circumstances. That is true, but they're both the same. Okay, so same idea. Anyway, guys, thanks so much for tuning in. I appreciate it. Please help us out and subscribe if you can. And we'll help you out with more problems. See you soon.